A few days ago, Power BI presented the future of Power BI in the Wellington, New Zealand Power BI Meetup. There was a lot of new features presented. One of them that really caught my eye was the update to the native card visual. This is what was presented. Um, in the future, we will be able to create cards that look like what you see on my screen now. Um, so there will be more formatting options for the card visual. There will be support for um, small multiples and lots of other cool features. So what I wanted to show today is if we really need to wait for this update to be available or if we could already create exactly this card using a different visual. So what I want to show you is how to create exactly this card um, using the HTML Viz Creator custom visual. I've already prepared a few things. I've already prepared an Excel file where I tried to create exactly the same KPI card that I showed you before from the screenshot. And also I created uh, a table with sample data, which we will later on link to this newly created card. So we have a country column because each card will be linked to a country. We have a head count, head count. We have the female, absolute, relative, um, the building name, and so on. So all the data we need to fill the card are available in here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring this data into Power BI. Uh, the easiest way to do this is by just copying it, going over to Power BI, and then I select Enter Data. Of course, in, in a real-life scenario, this would be loaded from, from a data source, but I'll try to speed things up a little bit for the demo. So I'll just do it the quickest way possible. I'll just manually add the data. So now we have our table with the data from Excel. Next step is we need to import the KPI card. But right now the KPI card is next is in Excel. So what I need to do is I need to save the Excel file or let's say the KPI card in the Excel file as an HTML document. So I simply highlight all the cells which are part of the KPI card and I go to File, Save As, navigate to the place where I want to save the file. Give it a name, I want to call it Cart. And I don't want to save it as an Excel workbook, but as a web page. And also, I only want to save the highlighted cells. So, important, save as web page and only the highlighted cells. Then I save, confirm. You can see I have a new file called card. And when I open it, because I've saved it as a web page, it actually opens in my browser. And that's my starting point. From here, I just right click, select view page source, which gives me the full HTML code that was automatically created by Excel. So I didn't need to do any of those. Control A for select all, Control C to copy, go back to Power BI, create a new measure, call it cart, and paste in this entire code. What I need to do now is to replace all double quotes with single quotes. And the best way to do this is by just highlighting one double quote, then press Control Shift L on my keyboard. This will highlight all double quotes from the code. Just press a single quote on my keyboard and all characters have been replaced. What's left to do is adding double quotes at the very beginning and end of the code to actually make my measure work. Okay, now let me add the HTML this creator flex visual and get the card 
measure into the HTML placeholder. And you will see that already I now have exactly the same card that I have developed before. Please note that um, I'm using the development version of the visual, so um, the version on App Source as of now might look a little bit different, but let's say from March 2023, the, the new version will also be available on App Source. So for um, people watching this, uh, it should be very similar to what I'm showing you um, soon. Okay. We noticed one thing. We noticed that the country isn't the way we want it. So we have the country horizontally, but actually we wanted to have it shown vertically. And that's just because Excel just simply doesn't save every single piece of formatting the correct way. Let's put it like that. I mean, Excel is not a web browser, so um, we cannot expect it to, to save everything 100% correct. But no problem, we can get this fixed. So, um, but how? Maybe I simply don't know the HTML code or the CSS code that I need to get this fixed. Let's pretend we don't. So, um, how do I find out what I need to do? So first of all, I need to find the word country in the code. So let's try to look at the code a little bit. So on the top, we have all these CSS classes. So that's all related to formatting. And when I scroll down, this is where table definition, the content of the table, the content of the card um, starts. So somewhere in here, we should have the word country. Okay, lucky enough, I, I found it. I'll also show you how to find it um, when you're just starting off using this technique, because in the beginning, it might be a little bit tricky, but of course, there is a neat little trick that makes it easier for you. So we can see that the country is part of, let me just increase this, is part of a specific class. So this class is where the formatting of the country is defined. So we need to go back up to the CSS part of the code and find this class. And the trick I mentioned just before to find a specific text part is also to highlight what you're searching for, again, press Control Shift L, and everything that is the same in your code will be highlighted. So when I now scroll up, I will see that here, something has been highlighted. And that's exactly what I need to modify. So this is the style of the country. Um, what I should remember is 84. So on line 84 is where I need to add a specific style. But I don't know this style. So what I want to do now is I want to head over to bisamurai.com because for all the things I don't know how to do, I want to go to our custom visuals knowledge base and I want to do vertical text so when I just search for vertical the article about vertical text comes up and then I can download the, the sample report and open the sample report I would say that is always a good way of doing things because you can see in the sample report which is still loading back here we have text which is aligned the way I want my text to be aligned. So here we have some vertical text, vertical text, vertical text, which means I simply need to go and find out how this was done in the sample report. Good, let's just wait for that to open. 
Okay, now that my report is open, I just simply select one of the elements which has the correct text orientation. For example, this bit here. Look at what DAX is used in here. Um, and then we'll see. So this is the table definition. And what we're looking for is the writing mode. This is described in more detail in the knowledge base article. Um, me personally, I prefer to actually download the sample reports and copy the code from there. So we have writing mode, and then we have the var writing mode, which is coming from um, here, which is selected value, text orientation, writing mode. So let me just copy this and also look at here and what we're looking for is the vertical um, ref right left i think okay let's try let's try let's go back to the report um, and let's just add a new element here which is writing mode and then it was vertical rl and now the word country here in the back should change the alignment, the writing mode, and that's exactly how it's done. So always a good idea. Head over to the knowledge base whenever you want to do something specific that you don't know how to do. Um, read through the article and, of course, download the sample report. And then you only need to copy um, little pieces of the code, paste it into your code, and it will work. So fantastic, that's good. Uh, let me just make everything a little bit bigger so it's also easier for you to see. That's actually one of the settings that we have in our HTML with Creator Visuals. It's a scaling. So whatever you do, you can scale things up and down um, using the formatting options. Maybe let's make it even bigger. Okay, of course now, Everything is still hard coded. So this 202 here, maybe get rid of the tooltip. This 202 is not linked to the data coming from our table at all. Also here it just says country instead of the actual country. So now we need to make every piece of hard coded values dynamic. Let's start with the country. The country is simply what is in the country column from my table. So one way of doing it is by creating variables. So we can create a variable called var country and it's simply the selected value from the country table. Yeah, this should be return. And now we need to take this variable and again in the code, find the word country and replace it with the variable. So here is the word country. We need to add two double quotes because we are switching from HTML to DAX and back to HTML. So we have double quote and percent. That's where we have the DAX part. We can add the variable and then and percent um, double quote to go back to HTML. When I confirm, we should be able to see the name of the country. Currently, it doesn't show anything because selected value doesn't return anything because simply I haven't selected the country. So this is where the category placeholder comes into play. Because I want to have my cards per country, I simply get the country, put it into the category placeholder, which will give me one card per country. So I already have my small multiples. Um, I can format this a bit. Maybe I want to get rid of the, the grid line in between. And also maybe I want to increase the size of, well, add a little gap in between the cards. Um, a gap of five, four, get rid of the line. So now I have 
um, a nice looking small multiples card. Of course, right now it's too big. I only have it big, so it's easy for you to see, but I think um, that's the, the, the small visual um, things that, that can be done later on. Let me keep it big for now. So we have the countries, dynamic. The head count is still hard coded, so let's take care of the head count next. So the var head count is just the sum of the head count. Then we go back down into the code. We're looking for the value 202, was it? So we have the word head count. Um, not far from here, we should see the word 200 or the number 202. If we don't find it, we can just type it, select it, Control Shift L, which highlights everything that is the same, and then change it from here. Double quotes and percent var head count. And now when I confirm, get out of here, I will see that country. And basically now I do the same thing for all the other values. So let's see. We have a var female, which is some female. We also have a var female percent, which is the sum of of this. And then let's try to also find these values again down here. Um, this here should be the female absolute number var female. The percentage here should be the var female percentage. Let's see if that worked. Nice. The, the percentage, I'm not sure. I think we need to um, change the formatting because that should actually be 70%. So let's just add a multiply this by 100. And then we have so 80, sorry, 62 is 70 percent of 89. Um, let's do one more. Let's also do the, the building. Um, let's skip the right hand side of the card for today because it's exactly the same technique. But let's do also the building. So var var building is selected value building and again we need to find the word the hard coded one and replace it um, it should be somewhere here var building very good one more challenge we want this color to be conditional. Um, let's say whenever the value is above 50%, it should be green. Whenever it's below, it should be red. Right now, everything is green. We haven't dealt with um, formatting of that at all. So let's first create a variable again. So let's say var um, female CF for conditional formatting and then we can say if this percentage is above 50 then show it in green otherwise make it red and I can use name of colors I can use uh, RGB code I can use hex code um, whatever you prefer. But now again, we need to find out the CSS class. So let's go down again and find our female percentage. And you can see that the female percentage has this class assigned. Again, Control Shift 
L highlights the class from the list up here so it will be easier to find. It's on line 53. Just remember the number 53, go back in here. And we can see this class somewhere has a color, a hard-coded one. And this color we just replace. We just say this is now coming from our, what did I call it? Um, something color. Var female CF, var fe Oh, I didn't save, okay, no problem. Let's just create it again. Var female CF is if this is above 50 green, if not, it's red. Let's see. Well, it will not work yet. You see, everything is still green. Let me show you one thing. So let me just add a table. Let's add the country. And so Germany should actually be red. When I only select Germany, it is red. But as soon as I've selected all countries, it becomes green again. The reason is that a CSS class has a specific name and that name always stays the same for the entire visual and because we are using small multiples we need to make and every small multiple card can have a different color we also need to give individual um, names to our CSS classes so what we can do is because we know that we split the visual by country, we know that the var country is unique per card. We just get this variable and we change the name of the variable we want to make format dynamically and just concatenate it with the unique ID of our rows being the country name. And we not only change it up here, we do the control shift L again, which highlights every instance of the same text. And then at the end of this, um, double quote, double and percent. In between, we paste the variable. And now this should hopefully work. Now we have green, red. Oh, we have some black ones which is I'm not sure why this is that's interesting okay that's very interesting var country let me look at the table um, this is unique yeah it should be percentage is above 50 it's green or red very good. We add the color, which is this variable, correct. Let's look at the CSS class. It's also appended. Um, Not entirely sure what this part here is. Is this also a hex? Looks like a hex code. Let's try to find out. Let's search for hex code. This blue, is it actually This blue, it looks black. I'm not sure. Huh? I'm not sure what happened here. Um, what I will do is I will definitely get this fixed. I'll, I'll um, 
upload or add a, a link to the file to, to the description um, where it will be fixed and I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what I did wrong um, and explain what exactly it was. Okay, I've got the solution. The problem why it didn't work was because New Zealand has a space in the country name and we cannot have CSS classes with a space. So what I should have done from the beginning, which is the better way of doing it anyway, is to add an additional column to the table, an index column. Because if I have an index column, I can make sure that really I have a column by which I can split the visual. So I did that. I went into Power Query and I added an index column, which just gives me the number of, um, well, for each row and uh, a unique key. And that's the one by which I can split. That's the one I can use to define the CSS class name. So that was one change. And the second one was, of course, that in the measure, I also added a new variable for the index to make sure really every row, every card, we have a different value. And this variable here, let me highlight it, Control Shift L. This is actually now the one I use to give a unique CSS class name per row. Because in the index, I can make sure I don't have a space. So I don't have the problem with New Zealand having a space in between. So I did this here where I defined the CSS class. And of course, also down below in the code where I um, add this class again to have a dynamic formatting for this percentage value. And now when we look back at the visual, everything is either green or red, depending on if it is above or below the 50. Um, cool. I just wanted to add this. I think it's much easier than me uh, explaining it in, in the comments. But basically, um, I think for a quick and dirty um, well, way of doing it within, I don't know, maybe um, half an hour. Um, I'm quite happy that this worked out with only one small mistake that I'm sure I'll be able to fix quite easily. Um, because now we have a nice small multiple card. And of course, a, if on our report page, we also had a, a table with all the details. Um, we can also use our card as a filter because we cross filter each card. So when I select Germany here, also Germany is selected over here. So the cards not only um, make it easy for the user to understand, but they can also be used instead of a slicer. So there's no need to add a slicer per country. You just select the card that you want or the country you want from the card and you filter down the rest of the report page. So I think that's it for today. Um, you, you, you've seen that there's no need to wait for all these cool upcoming features with the HTML Viz Creator Custom Visuals. Um, there's so much that you can create. KPA cards was just one simple example. There's way more that can be done. So make sure to head over to bisamurai.com, download our sample reports and just click through them and get inspired. And if you struggle with creating your own table or card or any other kind of visualization, um, don't hesitate and reach out to our support. And we're always happy to help. So thank you very much and hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.